let's check out the complete second law toolkit. So uh, we start off with determining the accelerated system of one, or, uh, one object or many objects, determining the coordinate system, um, drawing a force diagram with motion maps, and if necessary, drawing a force diagram with components, and again, if necessary, rotating. Uh, then we explicitly, explicitly write out the two, um, I'm sorry, Newton's two second laws, the one in the linear and the one um, rotationally. Um, then we write in the filled in versions of both. And then finally, we substitute the numerical values. So here's an example. We've got a one kilogram wheel. So we're just focusing on the, the wheel. Uh, it's got a 0.25 meter radius. It's at rest on a fixed axis, a force of 0.45 newtons is applied tangent to the rim for five seconds. We want to find the angular acceleration of the wheel. So step one is determine what we're accelerating, and it's going to be the wheel. Uh, we'll call up and to the right positive and counterclockwise positive. Linearly, we'll say that it's not accelerating, nor is it, um, nor does it have any velocity, so dots for both of those. Uh, rotationally, we'll say that um, it starts off with no uh, rotational velocity, then it, then it picks up rotational velocity. The um, rotational acceleration will be constant, and we'll call this counterclockwise for both. Uh, the force diagram will include a force due to gravity from the, through the center um, of our solid object then an applied force somewhere along the wheel, on the outer edge of the wheel, then a normal force, or we could call this the vertical force from the axis, and then another normal force or a horizontal force from the axis. So this, um, I'll, and then step four is to explicitly write out our two second law equations, the linear one, F is equal to MA, and the rotational one, tau is equal to I alpha. And let's go on to step five. So in the horizontal, if we look at the horizontal linear equation, Newton's second law equation, we'll have the normal force, the horizontal normal force or the horizontal axis force minus the applied force because that, that's to the right and that's to the left. So we'll make the applied negative and the horizontal normal force uh, positive. In the vertical, we've got FNY or the vertical normal force, and then the force due to gravity downward. So notice there's no net horizontal or vertical force because we're not go going to expect this wheel to, to move linearly to the left or to the right. Um, rotationally, however, notice we have four torques. We should always have the same number of torques as we do forces on our object, okay? And Newton's second law says if we add up all those torques, they should equal I alpha, where I is a rotational inertia and alpha is, alpha is the rotational acceleration. Uh, and our equation for it, um, for the torques, is the force times um, the lever arm, F times R. So the applied force times R, um, FNY times R, FNX times R, FG times R. Okay, now these three forces I want to focus on, the FNY, FNX, and FG. Notice that the, the distance that they're from, the, that um, they are away from the uh, axis rotation is zero. So these three R's, R, R, and R, are all going to be zero. So all three of those parts of, or all three of those expressions become zero. The only non-zero torque is this one here, the applied force times the radius, the actual radius R, okay? Uh, and so what happens there is, that means I just get this part of it equaling I alpha, but the rotational inertia I of a uh, wheel is mr squared. I multiply that times alpha. I can do some algebraic things here where I cancel out um, an r from the left and an r from the right. And then I solve this for alpha by dividing both sides by mr. And then 
uh, do the math and I find that the angular acceleration is 1.8 radians per second squared. Okay, so in another example, we can calculate the initial acceleration, um, initial angular acceleration and initial linear acceleration um, at the end of the rod, so this end of the rod. All right, so we'll follow our steps again. The rod is what we're accelerating. Up to the right is positive, counterclockwise is positive. We don't expect the object to be moving linearly, only rotationally. So rotationally, it's going to have a rotational velocity in that direction and a rotational acceleration in that direction. Then if we look at the force diagram, we got this axis force, so this normal force that points straight up and the force due to gravity through the middle. And, and remember our force due to gravity is always at the center of mass or in the middle of our solid objects. Uh, we uh, explicitly write out our two rotational equations. I'm sorry, our two um, second law equations in the we only have a vertical equation linearly so the normal for up, normal normal force up and the force due to gra gravity down added together again equals zero notice we have no horizontal rotationally we've got again we've got a torque for each force that's applied okay so the torque from this normal force or from the axis and the force due to gravity torque is equal to I alpha. Then just looking at this equation, notice again that this normal force, um, uh, there's in that normal force, the, the calculation for the torque um, becomes zero because um, there is no lever arm. In other words, there is no distance from there to there. So that R becomes zero. This R is the distance from F, G, where our force is applied to our axis, which turns out to be half of the entire length because we're calling this entire length L. So this R just becomes one half of L. Notice also that because we're rotating this about the end, it's one third ML squared, the rotational inertia of the rod. So again, that R becomes zero. So we get, since the force due to gravity is the mass times the gravity, on the left-hand side, we get mass times gravity times one-half L equals one-third ML squared alpha. Then uh, we can cancel out the L on the left and one of the L's on the right and an M from each side. Then if we solve this for alpha, we get 3G over 2L then we have to remember we can use the bridge equation. So um, just to go back, this is the angular acceleration for the entire rod. Everywhere along the rod, the angular acceleration is 3G over 2L. If we want to find the, the um, tangential acceleration of the end, we can use our bridge equation. A is equal to alpha R, where R is equal, in this case, to L, because again, we want the um, tangential acceleration at the end. So we plug this equation or both of these two equations into uh, the equation that we solve for and we get that the tangential acceleration equals 3 halves g. So that's the acceleration of just this end. Okay, Whereas this alpha was alpha anywhere along that rod. And we'll do this problem in class.